نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل اقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی و جعل لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طویبا و عملا متقبلا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ سورہ المعارج This surah being revealed in Makkah, it has 44 verses, two stanzas, 70th by the order of arrangement and 79th by the order of revelation. This surah, is, uh, it receives its name from the word Zil Ma'arij in the third verse. And regarding the period of revolution, the surah was also revealed down in the similar period of Surah Al-Haqqa, that is initial period of Makkah. Regarding the basic uh, theme and the subject matter of uh, Surah Al-Ma'arij, it admonishes and gives warning to the disbelievers who were making fun of uh, the news of resurrection and hereafter, who were mocking about the informations of hell and heaven, and they were challenging Prophet ﷺ to cause resurrection. They were challenging Prophet ﷺ to bring the torments of the day of judgment with which he was threatening them that they would take place if they had not believed the truth. So the surah opens with the word, that was uh, is a sa'al, a sa'ilan, that a demander has demanded torment. So then it was uh, it will be said that resurrection, which they are uh, they are desiring to be hastened out of jest and out of fun, it is going to be terrible when it comes, and it will cause a great distress to all the culprits who are being so jestful and who are making fun of the whole belief of hereafter. And then Allah has warned that on the day of uh, the destinies of men, they will be decided strictly on the basis of their belief and their conduct. And uh, who will fear the punishment of Allah will be those who will have no fear and who will have no distress on the day of judgment. And in the conclusion, the disbelievers of Makkah who had rushed upon Prophet Sallallahu from every side as soon as they saw him in order to make fun of him, they have been warned to stay away from this. And they have been warned that if they do not refrain from this behavior, then what will happen is that they will be doomed with a fate which has been uh, mentioned according to the torments of the day of uh, judgment. بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہ says a supplicant asked for punishment bound to happen اللہ says سعلا سائلم بعذاب واقع للکافرین لیس له دافع من اللہ ذل معارج a supplicant has asked for a punishment bound to happen to the disbelievers of it, there is no preventer. It is from Allah, owner of the ways of ascent. The angels and the spirit will ascend to him during the day, the extent of which is 50,000 years. So be patient with gracious patience. Indeed, they see it as distant, but we see it as near. On the day, the sky will be like murky oil and the mountains will be like wool and no friend will ask anything of a friend. They will be shown each other. The criminal will wish. The criminals of the day of judgment, those who had not believed in this day, those who had made fun and mocked about the informations of this day, those who had not feared this day, those who had not made any preparations for this day, the criminals will wish that he could be ransomed from the punishment of the day by his children and his wife and his brother and his nearest kindred who sheltered him and whoever is on the earth entirely, so then it could save him. 
No, indeed, it is the flame of hell, a remover of exteriors. It invites he who turned his back on truth and went away from obedience and collected wealth and hoarded. Indeed, mankind was created anxious when evil touches him, impatient, and when good touches him, withholding of it, except the observers of prayers. So here in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining the manners, the behaviors, and the habits of whom al-musalleen. Al-musalleen are those, inshallah, who will be called out to enter through Babu Salah. They will no doubt have what the Miftahul Jannah, the key to paradise, because they will be those who would have successfully answered the first question on the day of judgment. The first question will be, what about Salah? Except the observers of Salah. Those are constant in their prayers and those whose wealth is a known right for the petitioner and the deprived and those who believe in the day of recompense and those who are fearful of the punishment of the Lord. Indeed, the punishment of the Lord is not that from which one is saved and those who guard their private parts except from their wives or their right hands possess for indeed they are not to be blamed. But whoever seeks beyond that, that is anyone who seeks illicit, illegal, unlawful physical relationships beyond these two, then they are the transgressors. And those who are, who are to their trusts and promises attentive, and those who are in their testimonies upright, and those who carefully maintain their prayers. So you see, prayer it is. Prayer it is for all the inmates of hell, of Jannah, the traits of J inmates of Jannah, Allah explains, the starting trait is Salah and the ending trait is Salah. Rabbi ja'alni maqima salati wa min suriyati. And all these people with all these behaviors and manners, they will be where? They will be in gardens, honored. So what is the matter with those who disbelieve? Hastening from, hastening from before you to sit on your right and your left in separate groups, does every person among them aspire to enter a garden of player? No, indeed, we have created from that which they know. So I swear by the Lord of all rising and setting that indeed we are able to replace them with better than them. And we are not not to be outdone. So leave them to converse vainly and amuse themselves until they meet that day which they are promised. The day they will emerge from their graves rapidly as if they were towards an erected idol hastening. Their eyes humbled. Humiliation will cover them. That is the day which they have been promised. Allahumma anis wahshati hashri. Surah Al-Jinn. Surah also revealed in Makkah. It has 28 verses with two stanzas, 72nd by the order of arrangement and 40th by the order of revolution. This is named as Surah in Jinn because uh, this is a title and as well as the subject matter because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has narrated an event where the jinn <coughs> Allah has narrated an experience, an incident in the life of Prophet Sallallahu where a group of jinns, they had uh, uh, heard through the recitations of Quran by Prophet Sallallahu and they had returned to their people to preach Islam. And uh, this event has been narrated here. So that is why it is known as Surah Al-Jinn. And uh, the basic uh, message of the Surah is, uh, basically to inform people that and to console Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to uh, warn the disbelievers and uh, also to console the companions and tell them the way that the jinns had behaved so that we also learn and all the reciters of the Quran also know how we have to relate and behave after we listen to the verses of Quran. Now why uh, the period of revolution is we learn from traditions in Bukhari and Muslim 
that uh, Prophet Sallallahu in uh, one of the earlier parts of his life, after receiving prophethood, one morning he was going to visit the fair of Ukaz with some of his companions. And on the way, he led, he stopped over to offer the Salah of Fajr. He stopped over at Nakhla. And while during his Fajr prayer, he was reciting the verses of Quran. At that time, a company of jinn, they happened to pass that way. And they heard the Quran being recited by Prophet Sallallahu And they listened to it attentively. And then they returned to warn their people of what they had heard. Now, there are commentaries in which we will learn, we will find out that they say that this event of the recitation by Prophet and listening by the jinn, they took, this event took place when Prophet had made the journey to Taif on the 10th year after prophethood. But you remember that this is not correct. This is not correct because from many other traditions and many other uh, verses of Quran do we learn that the occasion when Prophet Sallallahu in the 10th year of prophethood had went to his journey in the um, journey to uh, Taif, the verses of Surah Al-Aqaf were revealed. The Surah Ahqaf was revealed at that occasion, and these verses were not revealed. These verses of Surah Jinn were not revealed at that point. So uh, Surah Ahqaf, as was agreed, was revealed in the 10th year of prophethood. And these verses were revealed when Prophet ﷺ had stopped at Nakhla at his Fajr prayer. Now, when was this occasion? Was obviously, we don't know the exact explicit time period, but definitely relating to verses number 8 to 10, we do find out that uh, these this event must have been in an earlier stage of prophethood because um, uh, in the verses from 8 to 10, we learn what the jinn, they said. They said that uh, before the appointment of uh, prophethood, before the appointment of Pro uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi as uh, the prophet, the jinns, they used to have one or any other opportunity to eavesdrop in the heavens in order to hear the news of the unseen. That is before uh, Prophet ﷺ was blessed with the prophethood, the jinns, they, they used to be, they used to succeed sometimes, that they used to gather the news of, uh, from the heaven. But after it, they suddenly found out that the angels had been set out as guards and they used to shoot meteorites were being shot on them from every side so that they could not find any place of safety from where they could hear the secret news any longer. And thereupon, uh, realizing that the security system of the heavens had been tightened and the guarding had been increased, they they born. They they set about the jinns. They set about for searching for any unusual thing that had occurred on the earth, or there was going to occur on the earth, because the security measures had been tightened up, and they thought that probably since many of the companies of jinns they had been moving about in search of an un unusual occurrence on the earth. So one of the companies came across to listening of this recitation of Quran, and then they formed the opinion that this was the thing for the sake of which all the gates of heaven, they had been shut against the jinns and the security system of the heavens and the gates of the heavens had been tightened. So this is uh, a reference to the fact uh, explained in verse number eight and 10 by the jinns that we learn that these verses of Surah Jinn, they had been, uh, they have been uh, uh, revealed in, in a very initial Uh, of jinns, their reality of existence, and we also find out about some of the behaviors and some of the characteristics and the qualities of the jinns. You know, there are certain people who do not believe in the existence of jinns, and they say that it is all about fairy talks, and they are all about fables and tales of the fairy lands, and exactly monsters and jinns and all these things, they actually do not exist. Remember, jinn, they are actual beings and they are creations of Allah. 
seven times in Quran relating and narrating the story of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam has Allah mentioned about the jinns. And also in Quran, we learn that jinn, they were created before the human beings. And they inhabited the earth before the human beings were sent on the earth. And as we also learn the order of creation, as Allah says, Wama khalaktul jinna wal insa. So it also relates that jinns were created before the human beings. And uh, we know that they inhabited the earth before the human beings. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that he was to create the superior beings, the Adam and his offsprings, and Allah informed the angels in Nijailun fil Khalifa. Then it was there that the angels were ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the descent of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam on earth. Angels were ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they did what? They drew the they drew all the jinns on, they were pushed towards the oceans and towards the deserts, and the earth, the land itself, was left vacant for the superior beings to be inhabited by. And these jinns we learn from Quran, they have been created from fire, as Allah says, not in Samum. And as um, as uh, Shaitan himself said, that you have created me out of fire. And Iblis was a jinn, as has been mentioned in Quran, Fakana min al jinni, fafasaka an amari rabbi, that he was from one of the jinns, but he transgressed and he disobeyed the orders of Allah. So the purpose of creation of jinns has also been explained in Allah, where Allah says, Wa ma jinna wal insa illa They have, like human beings, like the superior beings, jinns have been created by to be obedient to Allah, to submit to Allah, and to worship Allah. And we also learn from Quran and from traditions that the jinns can be righteous and pious and believers, and they can be disbelievers and disobedient also, and sinful jinns also. And uh, regarding uh, the sending of prophets towards jinn, there is no worse of Quran and there is no tradition from Prophet Sallallahu where we learn that there were jinns chosen from, uh, there were prophets chosen from jinns. We don't, we have no information or knowledge from Quran and Hadith whatsoever. Wallahu alam bis sabab. But we surely know one thing that jinns, they used to come to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to other prophets also. Like we know that Hazrat Suleiman Alayhi Salam, he had the control and he was the master of jinns by the order of Allah who had been subordinated to Hazrat Suleiman Alayhi Salam. And we learn by tradition that jinns used to come to <coughs> Hazrat Musa Alayhi Salam and Hazrat Ibrahim Alayhi Salam also. And uh, we know and we can learn from traditions that jinn can see human beings, but human beings cannot see them until and unless they transform their condition. And jinns, they can transform their conditions. Like we learn from traditions that they can change their form into a snake. As Prophet has told all of us that if you see a snake and if you want to hit it and kill it, then before it declare that you're going to kill it and hit it, because if it is a jinn, then the jinn will go away from there. And if the snake doesn't go away from there, then it is not a jinn. It is what? It is a snake and then you can kill it. And we know that they eat and they drink. And the diet of the jinns is the bone of the animals. And um, similarly, the diet of their animals. So jinns also have livestock and animals like we superior beings have. And the diet of their animals and livestock is the excreta, the excreta of the livestock of human beings. And similarly, the jinn can be masculine and feminine, that is male and female. And we learn. Uh, that a full adult jinn, the mental capacity, the mental capacity of a full elder jinn is like a 10 year old human being, a child, a 10 year old child of a human being. So mentally, human beings are much, much superior as compared to jinns because they are superior beings. And as far as the covering of time and distance, etc., it is very easy for jinns. They can easily reach the heavens and they can fly over and they can cover short, uh, huge distances in a very short time. And they can, uh, we do learn that they can influence and they can 
enter the human bodies, but itself without the help of the master of the jinn, it is not possible for the jinn as it is. The jinn cannot influence human beings and the jinns cannot enter the body and control the body of human beings until and unless assisted, supported and guided and helped by the master, the human master himself. And the human beings, they can get control, they can get control and they can make uh, the jinns as their subordinates and servants. And we do also learn that it is only the disbeliever and the sinful jinns uh, who can be controlled by the sorcerers and by those who perform the acts of magic and all incantations. So <clears throat> the, the human masters, the sorcerers and the magicians who control and subordinate the jinns, it is with their help and with their guidance and with their counseling that they can, uh, they can control and they can enter the human body. And for a jinn to enter a human body, the condition of the human body, which makes them an easy prey to the control of jinn is that when the person is in a, in a very extreme fear, is extremely angry or in a state of, is in a very highly furious or is in a state of impurity or is in a state of disobedience and transgression to Allah. So in these conditions, he, the person is uh, in a favorable state to fall prey to the control and influence being excised by the jinn over him. So this is a brief information which we gather from the verses of Quran and uh, we gather from the traditions of Prophet ﷺ regarding information of uh, the jinns. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qul uhiya ilayya annahus annahus tamara nafarum min al jinni faqalu inna sami'na Quranan ajaban yahdi ila يَخْدِي إِلَى الرُّشْدِ فَآمَنَّا بِهِ وَلَا نُشْرِكَ بِرَبِّنَا أَحَدًا Allah says, Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it has been revealed to me that a group of jinn listened and said, Indeed, we have heard an amazing Qur'an. So you know what? That from these verses which we are going to read, we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will be actually, actually instructing and guiding all of us the way we need to listen to the verses of Quran and the way we need to respond and behave after listening to the messages, commandments, and teachings of Quran. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, appreciated and Allah has shown his like towards the way the jinns behaved and the way they, uh, they heard and listened to the recitations of the verses of Quran and the way they behaved and reciprocated in return. So this is how we need to listen to the Quran and this is how we need to respond to the verses of Quran is by doing what? Believe in the oneness of Allah, believe in the attributes of Allah and consider the consider that realizing that the foolishness of uh, how foolish those people are who do not believe in the day of judgment. So they did what? They said that we have heard an amazing Quran and they said what? It guides to the right course and we have believed in it and we will never associate with our Lord anyone. And it teaches that exalted is the nobleness of our Lord. He has not taken a wife or a son and that our foolish one has been saying about Allah an excessive transgression. And we, we had thought that mankind and the jinn would never speak about Allah a lie. And there were men from the mankind who sought refuge in men from the jinn. So they only increased them in burden. So the right manner of listening to the Quran and responding to the Quran is that after listening to the Quran, we need to believe in in the oneness of Allah, in his attributes, and consider all those who do not believe in the attributes of Allah as foolish and being forgetful. <clears throat> and in this verse number six, the jinns said that men from mankind was seeking refuge in men from jinn. What was this? You know, this was prevalent in, it, it was a prevalent custom in uh, 
in that period of Arabs that when they, they were traveling as caravans and the caravans used to come to a desert, then before crossing or before entering the desert, the chief of the caravan used to call out, used to call out loudly to the chief of the jinns of the desert. And they and the chief of the caravan used to call out the chief of the desert, jinns of the desert, asking to stay away from harming the human beings and to scare them off. And you know, despite the fact that human beings are the superior beings, so when the jinns used to be asked to stay away and not to harm them, so the jinn they used to they they got vain and they got proud of their power, which they did not actually have. And they had thought, as you thought, that Allah would never send anyone as a messenger. And we have sought to reach the heaven, but found it filled with powerful darts and burning flames. This was what? This was an experience which the jinns were narrating that before the Prophet or the Prophet وسلم, when they used to go up to the heaven of the earth, they had detected and they had sensed that the security of the heavens had tightened have found it filled with powerful guards and the burning flames. And we used to sit there in, in positions for hearing, but whoever listens now will find a burning flame lying in waiting for him. And we do not know thereof whether evil is intended for those on the earth or whether their Lord has intended for them a right course. They had sensed a change. And among us are the righteous, and among us are others not so. We were of the divided ways, and we have become certain that we will never cause failure to Allah upon earth, nor can we escape him by flight. And when we heard the guidance, we believed in it. And whoever believed in his Lord will not fear deprivation or burden. And among us are Muslims in submission to Allah, and among us are the unjust. And whoever has become a Muslim, those have sought out the right course. But as for the unjust, they will be for the hell fire wood. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. And Allah revealed that if they had remained straight on the way, we would have given them abundant provisions. So we might test them therein. And whoever turns away from the remembrance of his Lord, he will put into arduous punishment. And he revealed that the masjids, the mosques are for Allah. So do not invoke with Allah anyone. And that when the servant of Allah stood up supplicating him, they almost became about him a compacted mass, say, I only invoke my Lord and do not associate with him anyone. Say, indeed, I do not possess for you the power of harm or right direction. Say, indeed, their will never protect me from Allah anyone if I should disobey nor will I find other than him a refuge but I have for you only notification from Allah and his messages and whoever disobeys Allah and his messengers then indeed for him is the fire of hell they will abide their end forever the disbelievers continue until when they see that which they are promised. Then they will know who is weaker in helpers and less in number. Say, I do know. I do not know if what you are promised is near or if my Lord will grant for it a long period. He is knower of the unseen and he does not disclose his knowledge of the unseen to anyone except whom he has approved of messengers and indeed he sends before each messenger and behind him observers that he may know that they have conveyed the messages of their Lord and he has encompassed whatever is with them and has enumerated all things in number. So here in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, verse number 27 and 28, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the state of affairs while sending revelations to Prophet sallallahu what happens, what happened was that the leaders of 
the leader of angels, Hazrat Jibrail alayhi salam, he descended with the revolution which was sent by Allah. But he did not come alone. He was accompanied with a group of angels. And the purpose was to protect against the invasion, to protect the revolution against the invasion and interference of shaitan and his groups and followers. This is all what? This is what we have learned as Allah says, that inna nahnu lahu lahafizun, that Allah took charge of protection of the verses of Quran. And we are learning from here some steps of protection of the verses of Quran by Allah. That there was, uh, there was the guarding of the heavens had been tightened and there were shooting stars. And now we learn that there was a group of angels, group of guarding angels who used to accompany Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam when he brought the revelations to Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, adada khulkihi, wa rizwa nafsihi, wa zinada arshihi, wa medada kalimatihi. Rabbana, la tuzay qulubana, bada is hadaytana wa khablana, miladunka rahma, innaka anta wahab. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastakbiruka wa natubu alayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, ameen summa ameen.